This is Talking Trends on Oxford TV with me in Kiruka eBay. And we are going to be giving you all the gist. I mean, a lot has been happening in Nigeria. So I'm going to be starting with this very first story. Since President Muhammad Bari took office back in 2015, they've always talked about what uh, the other governments did and what they did not do, what they've been doing, how they've been fighting corruption and all of that. So in Oweri, when um, the president went to commission some, you know, you know when they build a road from here to here, they put their poster. So he went to commission such roads. And then in a way, he now decided to, you know, give himself some accolades and kudos to himself and his government. And he's now saying that they have done extremely well from 2015 that they entered into power, that they have done extremely well. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, let's listen to our president. But you look at the city of infrastructure. Some of the roads since the good old PTF days. Look at the railway. It was virtually killed. Power, we are still struggling. But when we came, was an unfortunate incident. The militants in the south south were unleashed. Between 1999, production went down to half a million barrels a day. And again, being unfortunate, the cost of petroleum went down from $28 to $37. But look at the problem in the northeast. Check with anybody from Bono or Adama, how many local governments were in the hands of the government then? They were in the hands of so-called Boko Haram. But now, go and ask the hard-working governor of Borno State. Federal government is still there in charge now. So, relative terms of time and resources, this administration has done extremely well. I have to say it because those who are supposed to say it are not saying it. So you heard how he ended it. Like, these are things we've done, and if nobody's going to talk about it, I will be the one to talk about it. So let him just keep singing his praises. I'm not going to take any comment, though, because we know how these comments will look like. So let's not take any comments. If you want to go and read comments, go online and go and read the comments. So another story I have here is actually quite disturbing because Recently, the Lagos state government have been clamping down on um, commercial vehicles, uh, motorcycles, tricycles, and even private vehicles. I mean, they've been a lot of impounding. Hey, grandma, don't start. They've been impounding a lot of vehicles in Lagos state. After impounding these cars, they are now saying they are going to auction it. So for the, I mean, last few days, for past few days, why am I speaking wrong English? Let me calm down. So, for the past few days, yeah, they've been auctioning a lot of vehicles in Lagos State. People who bought their cars way what's more than 2 million, 1.8 million, these cars are now being auctioned for 250,000 naira. Imagine you bought your car for 2 million naira and then they are telling you that they are going to auction your car for 250,000. 450,000. This is the case. This is what is going on in Lagos currently. And then again, people will say, ah, let's pity them now. Why are they, you know, why is the government doing this? Why is the government clamping down on this? But then again, there are rules and regulations. Some of these people broke traffic laws. Some of these people follow one way. Like we always say, some of them will follow BRT lanes. Some of them would, you know, beat traffic lights. A lot of these things. I mean, I know a lot of us beat all these things. And then we think they're not seen. So if they catch you now, they are going to impound your car. So this is what is going on now. Let's even watch. The one that is even troubling me is the people that are even pricing these cars. 270,000. Can you imagine? Let's watch these videos because it's actually, well, if you ask me, it's troubling. But then again, 270, 280, 300.
için And then what this government does is they don't even give you options. I know that most of these people, they must have told them to pay some fine and then get their cars, but they don't even have the money. The woman and her son they, that, they were, that were crying, that's like their means of livelihood and it has been taken away from them. What other options do they have? So let me take some of the comments. Someone here says, these people are heartless. God forbid. How will you use your money to purchase the tears of other people? Ha! Ah, wickedness. Another person says, please, how can I get their contacts? Yeah, a good Samaritan. Another person says, Nigeria makes you feel like the world is filled with sadness. Who knows? But if they tell you to obey traffic laws, just be trying and be obeying the traffic laws. I know this is harsh, but if you look at it on the flip side, what can we do? It's the government of Nigeria. That's what happens. And when they make these rules, I beg, they not go catch me for road, though. Hey. So, another story I have here is, um, you know this phrase, another man's meat is another man's poison. This is the case. The federal government has granted 126 Britons, Lebanese, Italians, and others citizens. You know, like everybody in Nigeria currently, they want to jackpa. And then you have Oibo people that jackpa into our own country and collecting citizenship. Hey! <laughs> Let me read this story. The federal government has announced the conferment of citizenship to 286 foreign nationals from 49 countries. The permanent secretary, Minister of Interior, Dr. Shaibu. Uh, Bagor disclosed this in an advertorial signed and made available to the press. Hey! <laughs> Even Belarus, Somalia, Ukraine, Ethiopia, Ireland, Kenya, Serbia, ah ah! Brothers and sisters, what's in they fight for this country? Hey! Hey! <laughs> And then again, the one that is even troubling to me is that our president now posed with a, for a picture, like they did a picture of with our president. I wanted to ask this question. Those of you that they give citizenship in America and UK, they, they snap with uh, the prime minister and the, gov and the president. Atayao. Somebody else says, one man's meat is another man's poison. Another one says, make them know they drag more oxygen where we they manage for this country. I beg. <laughs> Another one here says, for wider is the gate that leads to hell. <laughs> anyway, somebody else says, but do we get to snap pics with the president of America if we become citizens of America? I don't know. Another person says, why wouldn't they be proud? See as we they share naturalization certificates, but if Nadia, if Nadia you go, you go shed blood to get one. You can't even need to fake marriage. <laughs> so stay in your own country, bottom line. That's what it means. Stay in your own country. People want to come to your country, Seth. So you should be in your country now. So right about now, let's go on a short break. And when I return, we'll have more stories for you. Don't go nowhere. If you don't know, get to know. I'm the one to call JJC with skills. Hey, what's good? My name is Nonso Basi. Hello, people. My name is Toka Makbara. I'm a film director. Hi, guys. My name is Shone Olamleko. My name is Chidi Hensie Okafo. This is Dante Goss Jimmy from uh, the movie Hyradev, executive producer. They call me the big daddy. Hi, my name is Charles Granville, and you're watching Oxford TV. Shout out to Oxford TV. Keep watching. Don't touch it. And keep watching Oxford TV. Keep watching Oxford TV. Oxford TV. And you get all the authentic and entertaining news right here. Keep watching. Oxford TV. Oxford TV. Hi guys, my name is Tommy Watsebe. I'm an actor and keep watching Oxford TV. Keep watching Oxford TV because Tommy Watt said so. Keep watching Oxford TV. That's what's up. Don't touch that down. Don't go anywhere. Oxford TV. A place to be. A barn. Ciao.
You're welcome back and if you have just joined in, you haven't missed much, but you have missed something, you can rewind and go and watch other stories. So this other story I have here, like it dates back, this is like our history. It dates back like 425 years ago during the slave trade. We all know like what happened during that time. A lot of people were taken out of the country by colonial masters who came to colonize African countries. Some of them came from Britain, some of them came from Germany, France, Portuguese and all of that. They were all in the African soil, trying to colonize Africans, you know, trying to give them civilization. Some of them said they brought mirror to them, you know, they've not seen mirror before. Our ancestors then, they've not seen mirror before. They'll bring mirror to them and tell them that, ah, okay, oh, this is what we're bringing for you. They even brought religion to us. So there's this particular story. This happened in the Benin um, Kingdom the current Benin Kingdom now it does states like we all know in the south southern part of Nigeria so during that time there was like a trade ex I mean there was trade between uh, the Benin Kingdom and the British uh, colonial masters and all of that so they were selling some of the artifacts in these kingdoms you know when you say okay um, give me this and I'll give you that it's more like trade by butter so they were selling a lot of the artifacts they had then so suddenly something now happened, some Britons were killed, they said about seven Britons were killed. That now led to um, a war, you see a war I would call it, but something happened though. And then the British government or the British colonial masters who were in Benin Kingdom that time decided to kill the people of Benin, they, they killed them, burnt their houses, killed women and children and all of that. After doing all of this, they stole those their artifacts that they were selling the bronze the i mean you can see pictures of the things that they stole back then so currently they are saying that about 900 of these things are sitting well in the british museum some of them are in germany some of them are in france and then i mean scattered all over the world because if you go to these museums you see those things and then when most of us go over there for holiday we'll be shouting wow wow like broken siren and be looking at our own heritage in some other person's museum. So currently, there's been a back and forth as to we want these things back. Nigerian government is saying we want our bronze and our artifacts back. Those other countries are saying, ah, I don't know how we're going to do it though. But currently, France have agreed that they are going to return some of these things back to Nigeria. Germany has also said they are going to return them back to Nigeria. But the British Museum is saying that they want to share with us. Imagine, you stole somebody something. Let me not even talk too much. Let's listen to the Cultural Secretary making this comment. I spoke to the Culture Secretary, Oliver Dowden, and I began by asking him whether he thought the stolen Benin bronzes should be owned by Nigeria. Uh, I think that they properly reside in the British Museum. Now, that doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't work uh, with the, the government in Nigeria uh, to see how we can um, for, for, share it with them. For, 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 forgive me, yeah. and I understand um, sharing, but they were stolen. Do you not think that they should be owned by the people that they were stolen from in the first place? Well, I think the, the problem with this, and of course, um, if we go back to things that happened in the, the, the 19th century mm. and judge them by uh, our values of today, it's completely uh, unacceptable. But uh, my concern about this is, where do you actually draw the, the, the line with this? The collections of our great national institutions have been developed over many, many centuries, in many times in uh, questionable uh, circumstances. I think the question now is about what we do with these. Mm. I love the Benin uh, bronzes. I've seen them many times throughout my life. And I think them being in the British Museum which is a world repository of heritage, allows people to see it. But that doesn't stop Understood. us from, oh, from, uh, from sharing it. OK, but ownership is key, right? Yeah. And the Nigerians say, the Nigerians say that if, when they get them back, they would almost certainly be happy to loan them back to you. But the fundamental problem is that they were stolen from the Nigerians and they want to own them. I completely accept that they were acquired at a time of um, rampant uh, 
uh, colonial expansion in, um, in, in Africa in circumstances that I'm not in any way going to sort of uh, defend or condemn with the values of the, the, the 21st century. So that's the secretary, the, the British cultural secretary, saying that he, they want to share with us. They want to be sharing it with us. You came to somebody's kingdom, you stole their stuff and they said return it. And you're not trying to say you want to share it. It's just like I keep uh, money in my wallet and then you go there, steal my money and then I catch you and say, ah, you stole something from me, give it back to me. And you're telling me, oh, let's share it, probably 50-50. I'll give you 500 and collect 500. How does that make any sense? So that is what the, the, the British Cultural Ministry or Minister is saying currently. And then somebody will now say that this comment made by Professor Uju Aya is barbaric. When she said, I heard that the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. Yeah, I understand the time sensitivity of this particular tweet. But what is um, wrong in the speech? She said thieving, they came and stole. Genocidal, they killed. Raping, and you know that by the ICC, the International Criminal uh, Court, they said one of the crimes of war is rape. So all of these things happened back then. So I don't see anything wrong with these tweets that they are calling barbaric. Yeah, I understand that, okay, the time is not right for this kind of a thing, but let's call a spade a spade. But remember, I don't have any opinions whatsoever. Anyways, no comments on that. Um, let me take another story. This one is quite interesting. It's, it's quite a pity. Like the things we do when we, are, when we say we're in a relationship, when we say we're in love with someone, when we, you know, those whole cliches of people in a relationship do. This has cost a 24-year-old lady or girl. She's going to be in prison for the rest of her life. Let me read the story. A 24-year-old Tavia Cham Chapman is facing life imprisonment after plowing her van into her boyfriend and the pedestrian at a mall. According to the Hamilton um, County Prosecutor's Office, the pedestrian Christopher Scott Grifton, 58, died as a result of the injuries he sustained when he was hurt, when he was hit by Chapman's van. So this lady found out that her boyfriend texted her sister, you know, some all those, I don't even know, all those kind of stupid things though. So she found the text and then now decided to go and kill her boyfriend. And in the process, she didn't kill the boyfriend, but she killed someone else. She rammed her car into someone, probably the boyfriend dodged and then someone, there's, see the video actually, I mean, I don't know why people do all of this and I don't know how we can emphasize this whole relationship issues. Walk away. If you saw a kind of text like that and you think, okay, yeah, he's cheating on you and all of that, instead of you to now go and commit murder, why don't you just walk away or even talk about it? And then when you can't reach a reasonable consensus, you just walk away. Now you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail and this is what happens every day. You hear that somebody pulled somebody acid because they found a text message because their husband or their wife is cheating. Walk away. It's not watch your life. Tomorrow people now be saying men are scum. Yeah, men are scum, but they also lead you into hell because you've killed somebody now and you're going in for it. Let me take some of the comments well, before I talk too much. Somewhere here says, hmm. And I ask again, where on they get this kind heart from to take one's life? I can't, I can't phantom it. Another person says, anger management should be a mandatory subject or course in schools. You have to learn how to manage your anger. All right, somebody else here says, five minutes of madness, a lifetime of regrets. True. Another one here says, it is also more difficult to walk away, but it is eventually more peaceful. Walk away, people just walk away i know it's hard but walk away that's the easiest thing you can do okay so back here in nigeria our own very lagos 
Omo, I don't understand, dude. Are you guys seeing like the beautiful potholes everywhere in Lagos? I mean, I look at it and I feel so proud. The Lagos State Government, I mean, kudos to you guys, oh, the potholes. <laughs> People are no longer taking their cars out, their vehicles, they're no longer taking it out. And when I say Lagos State Government, this does not mean I'm talking about the um, governor or the governor's office. I'm talking about all those people that we elected, elected government officials from your chancellor to your chairman and all those people. So these are potholes I've been witnessing from Ikeja to... Um, Alim or Shaw local government area. So just, you can even send us a picture of how the potholes in your area look like. I think we can even take pictures of these things. Since the British people have refused to give us our bronze and our um, artifacts back, we can just snap these ones, put them in our museums. We don't have a museum in Nigeria. And let's start snapping our potholes and start putting it. People can actually come and pay and look at our potholes because they are really, really beautiful. We like <laughs> I'm looking at them and I'm like, are you serious? Like, and then again, election is coming and what do you even hold these people accountable for? What is the premise that these people are campaigning? Your local government chairman, when he won the election, what did he promise to do for you? Are you holding him accountable? These are the people you should hold by the balls. When I say balls, I don't mean literally, but you understand what I'm saying. Hold them accountable so that they will do what is right. Because this is not the job of President Muhammad Bari, and this is not the job of Governor Sonwoli. This is the job of your, of your Vice Chancellor, or your Chancellor, your Chairman, your Vice Chairman, even the youth leader in that area. Even your landlords can actually have meetings and fix your roads. And fix your roads. It doesn't necessarily mean that Sonwoli has to come down from his office and then come and fix your roads for you. I'm just saying. So let us see the pictures in your area. I mean, if you have potholes in your area, if you have roads as potholes in your area, let us see them. And then, I mean, we can take pictures. And they're so beautiful, don't you see? Very, very beautiful. Forget the rain. Oh, you know that rain has another um, bad effect on the roads. But look at these potholes now. Very beautiful. <laughs> so the people you should hold accountable are your vice chairman, your chairman, your youth leaders, your um, landlords and everybody in your streets actually hold yourselves accountable i mean what will it cost to repair these roads so that's the much you can take on talking trends today and like i always say take it down take it up, you'll take a glass of wine i mean it's friday it's i mean it's the weekend the weekend is here so calm down relax a little bit you have earned it i know i don't have a glass of wine today as usual i'm watching my weight so my doctor said i should stop drinking wine so you know i'm taking it down i'm taking water and okay, minding my own business as well so you should also try it it's very very healthy so don't forget to like give us a thumbs up comment and share this video the ones you like share them retweet them you know something and then don't forget to subscribe subscribe to the YouTube page you're not going to get you're not going to pay to subscribe just click away just subscribe it's very easy like that so thank you all for watching until I come your way again next week I'm Hiroka eBay and um, cheers to the weekend they're asking me what I'm going to do because I usually do a toast with my glass, but chest for the weekend. <laughs>